Good morning, everyone. So, hope uh, you are feeling uh, sleepy after last night. Okay. So, I would like to thank everyone for being here. And I would also like to thank uh, the organizing committee of PyCon Thailand. They are really doing a fabulous job. And especially, I would like to mention Frank Oz, who has been in constant touch with me since the first day of uh, submission of my talk. So, yeah. Uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tushar Bansal and I am a pre-final year student at the LNM Institute in Jaipur, India. So recently I got certified as an open leader from Mozilla and apart from this I am also a software developer and I have a keen interest in web development and I started uh, working on NLP uh, since last three months and um, I, I, uh, currently I am working on a project which is basically approved by government of India and the project name is Surveillance of Vehicle On-Road Activities. Yeah, so that was a bit about me. So yeah, now let's start with the topic. Uh, basically, uh, I, will be dis I will be discussing about uh, developing natural languages application using Python. So anyone who has worked up on natural language processing or uh, knows about natural language processing here? Okay, so let me tell. Uh, basically, NLP is training computers to understand human languages like English, Hindi, or any French, Spanish, so that they can manipulate and they can understand it. So basically, NLP has gained a lot more popularity in the last few years because of the vast amount of data available on the internet and social media. So it becomes very difficult for uh, humans to analyze the data. Therefore, we need some tool to um, basically compute and find the analysis. So yeah, basically NLP uh, is a branch of artificial intelligence and uh, it is important because there are a lot of implications of uh, natural language processing in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, like uh, I will be discussing some applications. Uh, first one is information extraction. Suppose let's suppose I have received an email from the PyCon organizers uh, regarding the scheduling of meeting uh, PyCon conference at True Digital Park on uh, 15th of June at 9 a.m. So I would like my application to automatically extract this information like through digital park and uh, 9 a.m. 15 June and create a calendar entry for this. So a calendar entry will be created like uh, the event is uh, PyCon conference and date is 15 June and time will be 9 a.m. and when you will uh, be through digital park. So basically uh, modern email services have these kinds of application included in them. Uh, you uh, might have booked a flight, right? So they are in your calendar. And uh, when the flight just is about to be there, uh, you get a notification. So yeah, it's being used in uh, real world nowadays. And next is sentiment analysis. Like suppose um, uh, someone is interested in mobile phones and uh, he uh, he's scrolling internet to find out about which attributes user cares most while buying a mobile phone. For example, attributes like camera, microphone, battery, sound quality are some of the features about which user scares most while mo buying a mobile phone. So we want our application to automatically extract these features like camera, microphone and uh, find out how users feel about this. So uh, like uh, a review like microphone worst quality is a uh, negative uh, sentiment regarding uh, microphone. And similarly a uh, statement like camera takes good picture, it's a positive sentiment. Right, so uh, these are the feelings according to the uh, reviews, how users feel. So other applications include uh, spam detectors. Basically 99% of the spam today are um, detected and are moved to spam folders. So problems like this are basically solved nowadays. However, uh, problems like summarization in which the computer has to uh, read uh, newsletters like uh, house prices increases or there is an increase in investment in factories and uh, it has to aggregate these statements and have to reach uh, at a conclusion that there is a growth in economy. So uh, problems like this are quite hard and are not solved pro uh, yet. Uh, people are working on these kinds of problems. And another application include machine translation. Basically, uh, if we want to have translation from one language to another. So this was much helpful to me in Bangkok because I, most of the people here don't ang understand English. So I used Google Translate to uh, basically um, tell them what I am saying. So yeah, other applications include spelling checker. Uh, there are many applications, we will be discussing some of them in further slides. So yeah, now we will be discussing about some of the popular buzzwords in NLP. 
So uh, basically tokenization. So anyone who has been working on machine learning here? So uh, you might be knowing about tokenization. Yeah. So basically in tokenization, uh, what we do is we break the last running text into small words. Uh, we call small, sorry. So basically we call these small words as tokens also. And uh, the, the last running test may be broken into sentences and the sentences can be further broken into words. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, basically it is the, uh, one of the basic step in uh, natural language processing. So next is a corpus. Basically it acts like a data set in natural language processing. The, uh, it's a uh, collection of large text. The text may be in one language or it may be in more than one languages. And um, next is stop words. So yeah, basically stop words, uh, stop words are something we don't want uh, in our analysis. We remove this because uh, they do not contribute much to the uh, overall meaning of the text. So uh, words like I am, the, or any other word, we remove these kinds of words. From, and next is regular expression. So you might have used regular expression in web development also. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, regular expression are streams of uh, characters, and these streams of characters are used to match patterns in a string. So uh, a regular expression like slash d is used to match any um, digits, any digit in a uh, text in the text. Yeah. So next one is information retrieval. Basically, information retrieval is the process in which we extract the most relevant information uh, that is uh, used in our uh, task. So the best example which I can quote here is Google search. Uh, Google, uh, when we type something on Google, it extracts the most relevant information. Uh, it extracts the most relevant information according to our query. So there are a lot, uh, many um, keywords. Uh, next is basically text pre-processing. In text pre-processing, uh, it is one of the basic step in uh, NLP, and every task needs the text to be pre-processed, and it includes many uh, steps. The first one is to convert the uppercase letters in the text to the lowercase letters. Uh, we will be discussing an example of this. I have made a project on this, so we will be discussing a uh, project at the last, and we will be using all this in the project. So uh, we convert all the uppercase letters to lowercase letters. And uh, we can do this using two lower function in uh, Python. And next we can uh, remove, either we remove all the numbers or we convert the numbers, uh, or we convert the numbers to words. So uh, we can remove numbers using uh, regular expression as I told you that we can use slash D to find all the uh, words, sorry, all the numbers in this string. And uh, next we remove all the punctuation and white spaces. Basically we do not remove white spaces between the words. We remove white spaces at the end and at the start of the word. And we can do this using, uh, using split function uh, in Python. And we remove punctu uh, punctuations using translate function in Python. And next, removing stop words, tokenization, stemming, and lambdaization. We will be discussing about these four uh, for, uh, in, in detail in further slides. Yeah. So as I told you that uh, basically tokenization is breaking the large text into uh, small words. So like a uh, phrase like uh, friends, Romans, and countrymen, uh, we apply tokenization and it will be broken into words like friends, Romans, and countrymen. And we represent this set as capital N in sets, uh, right? And V is the set, uh, size of the vocabulary. And vocabulary is basically all the unique words. In tokens, you might have duplicate words. So yeah, there are many issues in tokenization. At the first, we need to decide what will be the standard, uh, uh, what will be standards of tokenization for each word. For example, in this word, word Finland apostrophe s with capital F, we need to uh, decide uh, how we need to tokenize this. Either we can tokenize it by removing the apostrophe and s, or uh, we can tokenize this uh, just by uh, removing the apostrophe, or we can uh, keep it like that only. Similarly, in this Havlet packet, we can either tokenize this into one, one token or two tokens, like have it packet in one word or in uh, different words. And even more complicated is the task of tokenization in other languages like German or Chinese or uh, Japanese. In German, basically, we, what we have is uh, we do not have uh, spaces between large nouns. For example, like this, um, in this uh, statement like life insurance company employee, this statement is written like this in um, German. 
So we need to apply word tokenization in this. And in Chinese, we do not have, um, basically we do not have spaces between the words. So what we need to do is, uh, we need to segment the words, we need to find all the different words. And the algorithm which is mostly used here is maximum match algorithm for segmentation. We will be discussing about this algorithm uh, sometime later. Yeah, so next is basically lemmatization. Lemmatization basically in this, we uh, every word needs to be lemmatized first before uh, further pre-processing in uh, further processing in an NLP. So first, basically, we reduce each uh, word to their inflection of uh, from their inflection of variant form to their base form. It's not like stemming in which uh, we basically chop off the last few characters from the um, word. So basically, uh, it uses morphological analysis to convert the word. For example, uh, words like M, R is, is converted to their base form, like, that's B. Similarly, car, cars, cars apostrophe, uh, car apostrophe S, cars apostrophe are all converted to their base form car. And in the face, the boy car are different colors. Boys is converted to boy, different uh, remains different and R is converted to B, colors uh, goes to color. So next is stemming. So before moving to stemming, uh, let me tell you what are stems and what are affixes. So basically, uh, stems are the core meaning bearing unit in a word. And affixes are the bits or character that are appended at the end of the word. Uh, so that, uh, like in uh, affixes the word, uh, affix is a stem and es is an affix itself. And in the word meaning, uh, mean is a stem and ing is an affix here. So we will be reading in this, uh, in further slides. So uh, basically what we do is, we chop off the uh, last affixes from this uh, word and uh, we reduce the word to their stem. And yeah, of course it's language dependent. So example, uh, words like automate, automates, automatic, automation, these all words are reduced to automat. And in this, uh, in this phase, compressed, compression are both reduced to compressed because it's the, uh, uh, the stem of these words is compressed. And we can either convert this R to AR using stem, uh, stemming or we can use uh, lemmatization to get R, um, uh, we convert R to B. We can either convert it to AR or we can either convert it to B. Right, so an equivalent gets converted to com uh, equal. Next, the base, uh, the most common and uh, the most simple algorithm which is used for stamming is the Potter's algorithm. And we basically use this for English. And basically it contains a set of rules uh, in which the first step is, what we do is, uh, the words ending with SSES. SSES, we chop off ES from these words and it gets converted to SS. For example, in the word like KSS, uh, ES gets removed and it converts to KRS. Similarly, the words ending with IES, we remove ES and it gets converted to I. And like in ponies, it gets converted to pony. So we exploit these rules in a fashion, uh, in a particular order. So even after applying these two rules, if uh, 2S remains, we uh, don't change it, we keep it as it is. Like in KRS, uh, it remains KRS. And however, after these three steps, if a single S remains, what we do is we remove this S. And like cats is converted to cat. And next is uh, step 1b. In this, basically, we chop off the words ending with ing or ed. Like uh, in playing, we convert it to play, and, and the word plaster is converted to plaster. So, proper care is taken uh, while applying the Potter's algorithm uh, that uh, the words, only the words which have a vowel at the beginning of ing or ed, only those words get uh, converted. Right? So, for example, in this word sing, there is no vowel before ing, there is only a word character s, so it remains same. And similarly, the further steps include the words ending with ational, iser, ater, these gets converted to eight, iser, eight, so, so on, right? And we will be uh, using this algorithm in our project, we will be discussing in, in further slides. So yeah, next is language modeling, basically every, uh, most of the tasks requires language modeling in NLP. And basically, it is one of the most uh, important topic in NLP. So basically, the goal of uh, uh, language modeling is to calculate the probability of a sentence or a sequence of word. So basically, uh, it is very important, as, uh, like in machine translation, we need to uh, distinguish between good translation and bad translation. For example, in this word, uh, high wins in India is a better translation uh, rather than large words wins in India. So we need to distinguish between uh, good translations and bad translations using probability. 
and similarly we need this in spell correction also uh, there is uh, much likely that uh, someone may mistype minutes as minutes so uh, we need to assign a high probability to the word uh, to the phase with correct spellings so we do this using probabilist probabilistic language models and uh, we, we, we have used this in word file or uh, creating any presentation so uh, many google google also uses and every uh, text editor also uses this and even Twitter is using this to formulate its own sentences. They are formulating these sentences, they are formulating tweets by uh, themselves uh, using robots. So they use uh, language modeling to basically uh, create new sentences by uh, robots. So yeah, as I told, the main goal of uh, language modeling is to calculate the probability of a sentence or a sequence of words. And we represent a sequence of words as a capital W from W1 to WN. And uh, we can also use this probability to calculate the conditional probability of the next word. Given, uh, so for example, uh, we want to calculate the conditional probability of word 5 given all the previous words. So uh, any model which can compute either of these probabilities, that is uh, the joint probability of the sequence of word or the uh, conditional probability of the next word, we call this model as language, uh, sorry, we call this model as language model. So yeah, how uh, can we can compute this probab uh, probability of this statement like uh, its water is so transparent. So you might have studied the chain rule in your higher schools. Uh, so according to chain rule, uh, we will be using chain rule for this. Uh, according to chain rule, the probability of a sequence of uh, word can be calculated by, by just multiplying uh, probability of the first word times the probability of second word given uh, the first word times probability of uh, third word given first and second word, so, so on. So uh, similarly like in uh, this statement, a probability of its water is so transparent we multiply it by first uh, taking its and then water with its previous words and then is taking its all the previous words and so on. So how can we calculate these individual probabilities? We can't count the number of statements which have its water is and uh, divide, sorry, uh, we can't count the statement which is having uh, its water is divided by the count of the statement in which its water occurs because there are a lot of many statements available on the internet and we do not have that much large data set to basically find out these counts. So we take an assumption here, uh, we use Markov's assumption for this. Basically according to Markov's assumption uh, what we'll be doing is uh, for calculating the uh, conditional probability of a word given all its previous words we can use just a uh, few previous words like we, I, we can either use uh, the last previous word like in uh, so or we can use uh, two previous words like is so. So more formally we can say that the probability of a sequence of a word uh, gets converted to uh, probability of uh, conditional probability of each word. So we multiply the conditional probability of each word. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So basically um, using the Markov's model we can uh, formulate our n-gram model in which we take this k as n minus 1 yeah sorry we take value of k as n minus 1 and the formula goes like this and the most simple and the most uh, basic n-gram model which is uh, used in uh, almost 90% of the NLP task is unigram model and a bigram model in which we have a uh, value of k as 1 and value of k as 2 in bigram model so in unigram model we calculate the probability of a sequence by just multiplying the probability of individual words However, for in bigram model, we calculate the conditional probability of each word given all its previous words using just the last word, just the previous word. But it has been found that uh, it has been found that this model don't work uh, well where uh, the sentences have long longer dependencies. For example, in the statement like the computer which I had just put into the lab on the fourth floor crashed. So if I haven't seen this word crash and I want to guess this word, so. Uh, I want to guess this word, uh, I am using this to formulate the statements automatically and I want to guess, I want to find this last word using just the previous word, it's um, uh, less likely uh, we will be uh, guessing it right and uh, instead of that if we know that the computer is the main subject here and crash is the main verb here, so uh, it is much more likely that we will be guessing this correctly. So uh, we can access the, uh, extend this n-gram model to trigram model, foregram model and further. So we will be discussing about, about popular Python library which is used for NLP tasks. Uh, the, the first one is NLTK, Natural Language Toolkit. 
so basically it is one of the most powerful library available on the internet for doing NLP and it has all the functions however uh, there are some um, basically uh, cons for this we will be discussing about them in for the slides so for example we want to tokenize uh, we want to tokenize the statement into sentence like the uh, text good is great god is great i want a lottery so we want to tokenize this statement into sentence so we can use this send underscore tokenize and we can pass this string to this so it will to automatically tokenize this into statements so uh, a list will be created with a string good uh, god is great and i want a lottery and for tokenizing it into words we can use word underscore tokenize and pass this string to this and it will tokenize this into all the words however you can see that it, it, it is not tokenizing it in correct way like in the word with uh, apostrophe w o gets separate and n apostrophe t gets separated so uh, what we can do is we can use other uh, function for this there are a uh, lot many functions for tokenization available on the nltk uh, available in nltk so like um, regular expressions uh, regular tokenizations we can use this uh, so that we can get a won't as a one word yeah so uh, can anyone tell me uh, why we need a sentence tokenizer even though we have word tokenizer basically at the last we want uh, every sentence to be tokenized into words so yeah uh, basically uh, uh, suppose we want to calculate the average number of words in a statement uh, so uh, for that task we will be needing st uh, statement tokenizer and also uh, statement tokenizers are used to uh, basically find how the user or the reviewer feel about uh, feel for that particular thing uh, about which he is writing a review so this is used in that yeah so we need to remove the stop words from the uh, our text so first we can get all the stop words using the words function and stop words module and we pass the language or uh, uh, we pass the language uh, for which we want to get the stop words and we uh, store it in a list uh, the name is eng and we get the words like i me my myself we are us these are all stop words and if we want to remove these kinds of words from our text what we do is uh, we first tokenize this text we first tokenize this text uh, text into words and then what we do is we iterate through, uh, through all the words and we find out the words which are in uh, the words tokens and which are not in the uh, stop words list so we um, iterate a loop and we append all the words which are in word token tokens which are in this uh, which are in the tokens of this word, uh, statement and which are not in stop words list and we print this so in this uh, is uh, is removed as, as you can see of the is removed and further yeah so uh, yeah as i told you we will be discussing uh, stamming using potter's algorithm basically we create a object for this uh, we create uh, the variable name is ps and we create a object for this and we tokenize this uh, text into words and uh, we call uh, ps dot stem fun stem function for each of the words so as you can see that programmers gets convert to program program gets converted to program only with remains same and programming rem uh, we stem this ing we chop off this ing and it goes to pro program and languages es gets eliminated yeah so uh, to do lemmatization uh, we create a object for this module we create a object for this module and we call a function lemmatize for this and pass the word uh, for which we need to find the lemmatize version so rocks becomes rocks and corpus corpora corpora goes to corpus and better goes to good so uh, lemmatization as i told you that it uses morphological analysis for it so we need to pass uh, pa we need to pass the part of speech for this so uh, in this we are passing a speech as adjective right so even if we do not pass this it assumes that it is a noun so it assumes that rocks is a noun or corpora is a noun and in this we have explicitly mentioned that better is adjective in this case so the pro and cons of nltk uh, basically the pros are it is a full NL, nlp library we can build a project uh, on nlp using only this library and basically it has pro plenty of approaches for each of the task and it support many languages uh, you have spanish french uh, hindi english or basically we have tamil also tamil is used in india, uh, india southern india and basic and the cons are basically it's very complicated uh, uh, the task in this we need to the implementation is very very uh, complicated and it's bit slow 
Next, we will be discussing a library which is a text blob. It's much more faster than this, and it has all the functions as an NLTK. And it doesn't use neural network for training, like deep neural network for training. So yeah, next we will be discussing about text blob. Basically, text blob is much more simpler than NLTK and it has all the functions and yeah. So basically to find all the noun phases in a text, uh, we need to find all the noun phase in a text. So we can use a function, uh, we first uh, pass the file in which we have the text stored and uh, we read it and then we create a blob. Basically this, uh, it is a uh, object for this and it, re uh, it returns an object and we call the function noun underscore phases for this and it finds all the, uh, basically all the noun phases. However, sometimes it gives a problem because it finds nouns, uh, it finds uh, proper nouns. So as you know that proper nouns have first characters as capital and the statement starts with a capital letter. So all the first uh, word in a, a statement gets also converted as uh, noun phrases. Yeah. So basically polarity, polarity is uh, basically used in sentimental analysis and basically it is uh, how, what is the sentimental or orientation of a statement. So uh, it returns a uh, score between minus one to one. Uh, minus one tells that uh, the user is feeling uh, super, uh, sorry, uh, one tells that this user is happy and minus one tells that the user is feeling horrifying. So what we do is we first uh, tokenize this statement using sentences as a tool. Uh, sentences uh, are used for finding the polarity. So uh, we first tokenize it into sentence and we find the polarity of each of the sentences. So as you can see that uh, in this statement, text blob is an amazing, amazing simply to use. What great fun. So basically as you can see that there is a probability greater than zero. That means the user is happy about that. This statement, the user is happy about this. So yeah, next is sentiment analysis using text blob. Basically it returns two uh, properties. First one is polarity as I told you in previous slides and other one is subjectivity. Basically subjectivity tells uh, how much the statement is a fact or either it's an opinion or a judgment of the person itself. So uh, it has a value uh, from one, uh, zero to one. Zero tells that it basically it is a fact and one tells that it is a personal opinion of the person. So for example in this uh, analytic, analytical analytics Vidya is a great platform to learn data science. So if we want to find the polarity of uh, sentiment of this sentence, uh, we use the function sentiment and as you can see that the polarity is 0.8. Uh, it means that the user is happy about this. The user is happy with analytical Vidya website and uh, the subjectivity is 0.75. It tells that uh, it is a particular feeling of that person. It's not a fact. Uh, if, if this value is to zero, then it's a fact. Yeah. And you can find the n grams. Basically, uh, we will be finding uh, bigrams in this, and we can use the function n gram and passing the variable two for bigram model. And if we pass one, it will find a, a unigram model. And we print all the n grams, so you can see that it basically combines every uh, two words in continuous fashion. So analytics with their with their is an a uh, great uh, so and so on. Yeah. So next, I will be discussing about my project which I built. Uh, basically, I built with uh, my friend, uh, my college mate, and the project name is Word Cloud Generator, and it's a sentimental-based project. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the goal of this project was to uh, find the uh, uh, to find uh, sorry to analyze the sentiments of the person who are visiting India, uh, basically Rajasthan. Uh, Rajasthan is a state in India. It's uh, too hot nowadays. They are around 50 degrees Celsius. So yeah. We want to uh, find the sentiments of the person who are visiting India and we want to find how they feel and what was their travel exper uh, experience. So what I did was I collected the database, uh, the tweets from uh, Twitter which had hashtag Rajasthan travels in it. So I collected this using the Twitter API and uh, in this I plotted a word cloud for this. So the words which are in green represent that they, uh, there was a sentiment, uh, positive sentiment about these words from the users. And the words with uh, red uh, means that there was a negative sentiments about these words. And the words with uh, uh, white uh, represent that there was a neutral sentiment. And the size of the words represent that how, what, what was the frequency of these words in the text. right? And the intensity represents how much happy or how much sad. Uh, the intensity of the color represents how much sad or how much happy he was with the uh, basically the uh, experience. 
so we basically uh, divide this into green words which represent positive sentiments white words re which represents neutral sentiments and red words which uh, represent uh, negative sentiment see that most of the words are green here so the overall uh, sentiments of the tourists were positive that means they enjoyed the tour to Rajasthan so yeah another thing which I did was uh, I find it I basically plotted the number of tweets for three consecutive days and as you can see that there was a high increase in number of tweets on the second day so it means that there was a, a public holiday or there was an event on that particular day so people were traveling here and there and they were basically tweeting about that so basically government can use this to uh, basically prepare uh, in advance for uh, managing the uh, managing the resources and all yeah so I will be telling about the procedure how I did this first I collected the data set and the data set Ah, yeah, the, the data set looks like this. It has ID basically every tweet on Twitter has a uh, unique ID and the date and the text uh, This is the uh, tweet which the people made and uh, since this column was of no use to me I just Sorry Yeah, I just dropped this column and after dropping it looked like this Yeah, next I converted all the uppercase letters as you can see that all the uppercase words are converted to lowercase words and I also remove the punctuation from this the lowercase I converted using two lower function and for the punctuation I found all the uh, words which are uh, all the character which are not words from this uh, using uh, regular expression and the regular expression is slash w you can find all the uh, character which are not words using slash w right and then we removed all the emojis and special characters and white spaces from it the white spaces are using uh, use uh, removed using uh, regular expression uh, that is slash the slash sorry slash s uh, slash s basically removes all the white spaces and tabs uh, so the text looks like this next uh, we dropped all the uh, rows which had uh, no entry in that so it was of no use because uh, the entry which have no value in this they were of no use so I dropped all these and then I uh, basically duplicated uh, sorry I removed the duplicate entries in this like uh, here we have a duplicate uh, tweet so we, I removed that and then I also resetted the in index for this I reset the index for this all yeah and the na uh, next I, I, what did, I did was I tokenized this text I tokenized this text into words I find all the words and then I found the polarity of each word how was uh, what that word tells about the sentence uh, so uh, the uh, positive uh, word is ha having a polarity greater than 0.1 or equals to 0.1 and a negative word has a polarity less than or equals to 0.1 and for a neutral word we have a polarity 0 for example the positive words goes like this India, Pushkar, Udaipur, Ashok, Galot, Village the uh, people were ha having positive sentiments regarding these words and uh, they were having negative sentiments regarding these words and neutral sentiments regarding these words and by the way Pushkar Udaipur and he is the CM of uh, Rajasthan uh, he was the CM currently he is not the CM and uh, these are the cities in India so yeah next what we did I was uh, I plotted this on a uh, uh, word cloud you can use the word cloud module for this and uh, I colored all these positive I uh, colored these all, uh, positive words as green uh, uh, sorry I colored these as uh, red and uh, this is white and I use the word cloud library for plotting this on this right so yeah that's uh, all from my side any questions Consider adding that as a signal in your model because it's like another person saying that they agree with that statement. Yeah, but having a duplicate, uh, having a duplicate entry will just increase the frequency of that word, and it will just increase the positivity of that word. If that word come, uh, if you have uh, tweeted uh, the same tweet ten times, it will just uh, increase the frequency of each word, and that would not be fine. Right. So that's why I remove the duplicates from that. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. No way. I think that's okay. So uh, in your word cloud yeah. uh, project, uh, so the size of the word 
frequency? Yeah, it, uh, it corresponds to frequency. I counted all the words, I created a map, and for each uh, word, I counted the frequency, and according to that, I plotted on that word cloud. You can find the code on my GitHub repository. Uh, the links are below. Uh, thank you for speaking. For speaking. Uh, I'm thinking about a retweet. retweet. Uh, okay. There's another kind of retweeting. For example, somebody retweet and add some comment on top of the, of the tweet. Yeah. Did you remove that? The no, I didn't remove that because they are having some of the words new. Some of the words are new in that case. I, I don't know about the API, but it's going to return the original tweet and say that it's, it's another is also the content of that tweet or is another tweet. Basically, uh, what Twitter API does is, if someone has retweeted that, it finds all the words, uh, the words the other person has added also. So uh, that will, uh, so if someone has ad added few wor more words, that will be in that uh, text column. So uh, if we match both strings, they will not uh, be same. So they will not get eliminated in that case. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you have any other queries, you can contact me at any of the below handles. Uh, yeah, or you can meet me outside. <laughs>